In this video, my good friend Rory Pascar joins me to play backgammon versus the bot. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. I appreciate your super thanks. These small donations help me continue to create a high-quality content that you enjoy. And with the membership feature, you can get exclusive access to the most popular videos. My book, Backgam and Backgam Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is in the description. Again, in this video, it's my great pleasure to have my good friend, Rory Pascar, joining me. Welcome. Hey, how are you doing, Alex? Good to see you. Very good. Uh, I'm very good. Thank you for asking. Likewise, how are you doing today? Uh, very well. Worked this morning, uh, took a little nap, ready to play some Backgam and kill the bot. You had some food, what was it I said? Uh, eat, sleep, play back. Uh, eat, sleep. Yeah. 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 And um, some recent news, I guess you won the Slavia Open. So, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, seventh year of the tournament. I've been playing, I've played every year. I lost in the finals of the first one to the great Artifin Nikoglu. Wow. Uh, lost in the semifinals, I uh, think, three years ago to Bogodar Ilyev, the organizer who's a grandmaster. He's awesome dude as well. Uh, and uh, finally uh, had my year and took it down this year. 167 players representing 40 countries. Wow. And, and that uh, was an online tournament? Is that correct? Yeah. Online tournament, just a single elimination bracket, but it is, but it is 21 point matches so uh yeah they, it was uh yeah they're they're long and uh grueling and uh it, when you win with one of those matches you feel like you did something <laughs> yeah very good well congratulations uh, on that and also congratulations not long ago you had the chicago open uh and that was very successful right yeah i had my uh record attendance 181 players uh beat the previous year by uh 25 uh we had 100 in the championship division which uh was kind of eye-popping to me i just never dreamed of having 100 players in the championship division or maybe i should have um but it was fantastic a lot of uh, we had a really good time things went over uh went off pretty well uh no significant mishaps of any kind so uh it was a great weekend and uh uh, I'm glad it's now in the past and I can get back to regular life. That's fantastic. One of the biggest tournaments. Um, so so that's that's great. What is uh, the feedback from the players in terms of how are you able to get such high numbers? What do the players like about it? What do they tell you? Um, the uh, One of the cool things that I'm able to do is the hotels that I've been working with have allowed me to, um, for one, supply uh, some uh, coffee and beverages throughout the weekend, iced tea, lemonade, hot coffee, all weekend long. Um, I always make sure the um, group rate includes breakfast. I think people like that. And just the magnitude of and the number of events that I have at my tournament it is a jam packed weekend. There's uh, th uh three or four, uh, three different levels of jackpots plus um, uh, what we I call a faster master, which instead of being uh, two points per minute with a 12 second delay, there are 11 point matches with but only 11 minutes on the uh, reserve and a 10 second delay, delay. And a lot of people really like that event. But the thing that really drives people is the fact that it's a Swiss format, the more Swiss format, quadruple elimination. Uh, you're actually guaranteed five matches not just four uh in the weekend because if you end up going oh and four or one and four on saturday the first day of the event you get into a free roll the next day for a um get back in board which is uh pretty awesome that's fantastic so lots of play yeah yeah and i understand um you have some upcoming travel plans in terms of going into uh, going to other tournaments tell us about that Yes, of course. Uh, this coming up, uh, uh, Carol Joy Cole's final time directing the Michigan Summer Championships in Novi. Uh, I mean, I just can't possibly miss this. I'm actually going with uh, my daughter Amelia, who's gonna we're gonna play doubles together, and she's gonna be on staff the rest of the time. Uh, and uh, it's just gonna be a great weekend. It's gonna be a huge attendance. I'll, I'll be shocked if it doesn't approach New York's uh, record attendance from January. I, I mean, Carol Joy Cole is beloved by everyone that's ever met her and uh, knows all that she's done for backgammon. And, and uh, I'm honored to be attending her last event, her last time directing. Yeah, that's great. And then 
later you're going to the world championships right yeah i uh, run registration for the galaxy team at the world championship in monte carlo uh they now have an online registration form which will actually expedite the process a little bit which is great i've been kind of pushing mark and company towards that and uh it's it's great to see players from all around the world and meet new players I met so many of the top players i've had the fortune of meeting just in the last three years while i've been doing registration um it's really a blessing i absolutely love going to europe for this event well that's fantastic congratulations on everything Thank you. Uh, good luck enjoy safe travels and then we're ready to start playing for today so are you able to see this board now i am very good so we're playing on a beautiful jeffrey parker board the xg board is made by rain he makes beautiful xg boards there's a link in the description to where you can get them i know like you like these colors very very nice easy to see you're playing the black checkers at the bottom xg the white checkers at the top um it's a three-point match you're welcome to consult with me the final decision is always up to you as the guest um, and then afterwards uh, we'll analyze it and the most important things uh, for these are number one to have fun and number two to learn so here we Sounds go good all right four three opens with two down and now okay i'm not gonna double yet not gonna double yet still premature okay um and i am actually not 100 percent sure uh but i'm inclined to run over making the two point here uh because if he's hitting that means he's not making a point as board without doubles so uh i'm inclined to run all the way yeah the the other thing that this does is if you're hit it would have to be oh yeah two, right strips the mid to do that good point it strips the mid and it also like twos work well here like four two five two six two even yep. three two and two one will we'll make this so duplicate some numbers um okay three one is going to make the five point and now rule five five one, one uh geesh. I well obviously four, 14 nine is mandatory and now you got to think about the one i don't you're not supposed to slot in front of him you're not supposed to uh playing nine eight is awful um oh it's very stacky i should say um and doesn't feel right uh but 24 23 never feels right uh but i just don't i think this is the least bad <laughs> it's not a good role um and i just don't want to stack it up so i'm inclined to make this play yeah, what do you I think was actually, i was reviewing one of my matches and i had a very similar option where i could do something like this um, I think uh, I didn't have a checker on the 14, but I had checkers on the 13 and it was a four one to play. So I can play four down 13 to nine and then the one up, um, or I can play 13 to eight. And it was a mm -hmm. similar position because uh, the opponent had only two checkers on the eight points. So essentially yep, what eight. Does is it freezes the eight point. If, like, ah, one, it freezes one of those 14. checkers. Sure. But then it turned out that in that position, it was right to play 13 to eight. The reason for that is if you look at your upcoming roles, like how do the sixes play? Like six, if you stay back here, sixes are pretty useful to come out. But if you play like this and then uh, come well, down. Six, one, six, two, make the bar. Six, three and eight, six, four can make an inner board point. And six, um, five, do this. So in this case, yeah, maybe. It, it, yeah, it is going a little deep, but uh, I just really don't like playing stack, especially with the level of prime threat that my opponent has. Yeah. The, and he's actually, his position is right. so much stronger than mine. He's probably, I mean, I, I know he doesn't have a cube, but he cannot be far from it. If I, right. I need to do something in the next couple of rolls. So uh, playing passive, I think, is not the idea here. Given, uh, well, there are a couple of other things that I notice about this position. There's a sure. two-point board versus a one-point board, so you're an underdog in a potential hitting exchange. And number two, with this priming structure, uh, I feel like it might be easier to escape if you're from if you're on the 24 point than on the 23 point. But but I'm not sure. Um, we'll see what happens. But we'll go with this is the play you like, right? Yeah, one thing it does do is like uh you know, like I said, your sixes do make uh some of your sixes make the bar point, some make a point inside, but now you also give yourself a good five to hop. So it yeah. it's not duplicating the six that makes the bar. Um so there like I said, I'm not hundred percent um 
sure of this, but it just feels right. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a look in the analysis. All right. Here we go. Six four mm -hmm. points on head. All right. Good choice. Six five. Okay. So now it's a double. And what are the things? And how far down in the? I'm only down seven pips, but I have no points in my board. He has three. He's threatening the fourth point. I think it's just an easy pass. And uh, how does the score factor into uh, into your consideration? Sure. Um. Uh, this is the classic case of uh, a three way three way. Um. You tend to double earlier than you would normally. Um, so earlier than you would for money. And uh, you tend to pass earlier as well. The take point is, I can't be sure, but I'm not sure, but I believe it's around 27-ish percent. And that's gammonless. And there are gammons here. Uh, clearly, I win probably less than 10% gammons, and my opponent probably wins, geez, it's got to be close to 25%, if not more. So uh, this just screams pass it might not even be just a three-way three-way pass if it was four-way four-way it's probably a pass if it's uh at, at many scores i think this is a pass i think this is just he he got way too good way too fast yeah for for, for the novice viewers when, when you're a three-way three-way even if the opponent wins a single game on a two cube they get to the one-away crawford score which is a valuable cushion um so that's why like a Two point win at three way three way is very valuable. That's why you have to be careful. A double gammon does win the match at three away, but it's one point of overage. So in that sense, the uh, gammon value on a two cube at three away three away is almost exactly that of money. So you're not gaining that much. So very good. Right. Okay, so pass, and then we'll play on uh, next one five one. Oh. So here's a five. Uh, split the back. Split the back, okay. Yeah, um, I'm not slotting yet. Right. Uh, go ahead and roll on. Oh, beautiful roll. Make two points. Very good. Okay, so now you're going to be thinking about doubling. Like, like yes, one of the things I, am. I do is, like, before each game, I think about the score and think about, like, what I want to do. So at this score, three away, two away, what, what, what are you trying to – what are you thinking about in terms of doubling? Um, as soon as I have a, any kind of real advantage um, – uh with flexibility and uh you know i have obviously i'm plenty flexible on the outside i don't have a lot of numbers that will make points but i have the flexibility where uh if i bring a checker down i'm not being there aren't many threats to that checker or um also threatening the possibility of an advanced anchor um so the, right. uh, i have i have good flexibility on both sides of the board and actually in basically three of the four quadrants Right. The only so, quadrant I don't have a lot of flexibility is my home board, but that's because I have a four prime with only one spare, uh, and I'm right. not. That's not over over concern. So now with this solid four prime and a two point board and the inflexible structure, it's likely that you'll double. Obviously, depending on White's roll, what sure. rolls by White would prevent you from doubling? Obviously, double ones, double twos, double threes, uh, making the four or five point, um, double sixes. Anchor. I'm probably not doubling. Oh, two three, the advanced anchor. Uh, two one, I'm probably not doubling either. The uh, either two one or two three. Um, so, you know, he he has a lot of numbers to uh, pause my cube, but uh, you know, I'll I'll still be fairly close depending on which one of those numbers he may or may not get. But he's if you're on something like five four, <laughs> there's no waiting. Is there anything you may think of that may be too good to double here? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I I can't. No, there, it's not possibly too good after his roll right now. Yeah. Okay. You would agree? Yeah. Double three. Yeah. Okay, so now... Yep. So I'm rolling. Rolling, yeah, you can't double after that one. All right, four, one. Oh, I can kill, but I don't like killing. You mean like this? Wow. Yeah. That's just not putting a checker where I want it. I wanted to make points in front of those two checkers, not... Yeah, you know, if I could point on one of them, that would be reasonable, but I can't. So, uh... Wow, it looks like just thirteen eight. I mean, it, the the there is one thought that maybe the one is twenty four twenty three, uh, because if he happens to blitz me out here and he has nine in the zone, 
Um, uh, if he blitzes me out, he wins the match without an, with an undoubled gammon. But I just don't think this is right because uh, it also gives him uh, what's it called? How many numbers? Uh, uh, looks like eight numbers to hit that checker on the nine point. So I'm just playing thirteen eight here. Yeah. Um, what's your opinion? Yeah, I agree with that. I think the, the other things is it's like basically, do you want this spare checker on the nine or the eight? And also, do you want these back checkers split or anchored? I mean, in a sense, you're right. You do like the anchor uh, because you don't want to be blitzed out. However, there there aren't as many checkers in the zone. And, you know, I think about the number of checkers in the zone, but also the spares because it's like, okay, so you have all these checkers in the zone, but what are you going to be attacking? Basically, this checker right. or, or one of these checkers. If there were another sure. checker like over here, or even if one of these were moved to the four point, that would that would make more it, threatening. Sure. Yeah. And then the other thing is, so once you're here, the other option would be to play six, five. So you have different builders, but this is a little bit awkward and you don't really want to break the eight points, you know? Right. So it's not like you're going to get like a good five, four. I mean, it would be nice to make it, but then it's at the expense yeah. of breaking this one. So I think just yeah. this is the best. Yeah. And actually this gives you a good four where you really don't have one. Well, if, uh, if you don't, if you come down and don't move that checker and you roll a four, you're good. Uh, yeah. But now fives and sixes can come out. Uh, fours can make the four point. Yeah. With a four, two, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Four, four, two, double fours, double uh, four. Uh, four double fours, maybe not, but. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I just think this, for the record, uh, I may not be as good as many, many of the other top players um, at um, giving the reasoning for my play. And that's because I'm not a, a, a great student of backgammon. I don't study nearly as much as most of the top players. I'm absolutely serious about this. I don't study nearly as much. I am very much a feel player. Wow. And I've been playing the game competitively almost 30 years, and I have a really good sense of the game. Um, obviously, you know, I'm not a grandmaster. I'm close to being a grandmaster, but I'm not there yet. Um, and uh, that's actually been one of the things that hasn't actually encouraged me to study a little bit more more lately uh, to get over that, get under the 4.2 and 4.1 to try and get under 4. Um so I have actually been studying a little more lately, uh, but historically speaking, like I play the game based on feel. Uh, and so I'm not as good as others at articulating my reasoning for all my plays. Okay, well, very good. All right, so now five three is gonna come out. He's just gonna run, glad we didn't get hit there. We're just rolling the dice because we're not threatening enough. Uh, so now, yeah. like it's it sort of duplicates that four two, right? Right, right. So, like, what's a good roll for you? Like, ideally, what would you like to roll here? My best roll would be double fours. I'm sure. Uh, I mean, short of not short of hitting six five is my best. Yeah. Um, uh, there aren't a lot of super jokers here. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, but six five, uh, even knowing I'm still probably uh, the race is well, actually the race would be dead even if I rolled six five, um, and I'd be in a really strong position, uh, especially if it doesn't save that blot on my nine point. Um, I could actually look at cubing at that point, depending on what he rolls. Um, but yeah, double fours is clearly the best. Actually, all fours are good. Yeah, and like double fives are great. Yeah, double fives are actually maybe second best. It may, it may be better than six five. I'm not sure because it makes the three point from yeah. the twenty three, or even the possibility of attacking. I don't know. Oh, actually, I misspoke. It doesn't make the five point from the twenty three, and I still have a bot. So yeah, yeah okay, mean, you could make the right. three point, but yeah. All right, so let's yeah. see. Four one. Okay, so there's the four. Yeah, and now it's. Hmm. So I'm never inclined to anchor here. I'm inclined to stay flexible and uh, maximize my the 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 play of my checkers, um, in my in my attacking zone. So I'm likely to play eight seven here, although that takes away a good four that now gives me a good three. Actually, it doesn't take away all good fours because I six four we can make the the three point, or actually point on head depending on how he comes in or doesn't come in. Um, but this just feels natural. Right. right. Um, generally, when you have a spare on the eight and you have a one to play, it's often bloated to the seven. 
Yeah. Okay. What's your What are your thoughts here? Oh. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. You're so double and... two anchored, and now well, that's a fantastic roll for him. Yeah. I'm not doubling for a very Five long time. Four, so that was somewhat duplicated, wasn't it? Yeah, but uh, the, the, there's no choice here. We're hitting. <laughs> Yeah, you There's would no like choice to make at all. that, but you know, we're, okay. yeah, we're we're down in the race and now we're winning the race. That's okay. a huge. All right, three, two, hit back. All right. Need to come in, please. Six. Thank four. you. Okay, so that's a four. And I think we continue hitting. Like that. With the six, yeah. Uh, just nothing else. Every otherwise, you're giving them shots everywhere. So this has got to be right. Take away half the roll. One of the yep. things that it does is it makes double six, double five, and six five into really bad numbers for white. Whereas if you did something else, those rolls would be would be very good. Absolutely. That's something like I, I think about like when you when you hit a checker, look at the dancing numbers and see how they would play if you did, didn't hit. And that that usually is enough to make a difference. Um okay double wow. four comes in points okay, on can, head. can we okay. change can we get a dice change please? Yeah let me change them for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Two one. See, now he came in. I brought, I'm happy to bring one in there. He's attacking, going to this. Oh, but the four prime come, might no. might still be. Come on, might come be. on. Oh, he didn't. Right, he didn't there. cover. He didn't cover. Yeah, and you got life. You come in with one. That's something. Even even if you're hit here. Yeah. Right. Because I needed to come in there. Back. He's switching he's again. Shift, but now look, look, he's got to worry about this. There's a long way to go. Yeah. So oh, he, there you go. So oh, no, that's he, his double threes. Oops, yeah. never mind. I thought they were mine. No, but Damn I it. mean, the nice thing about that is these these checkers remain stuck, right? So there's the three. Four twos. Any point on point on head. Double three is oh. the upside down number. Okay, so that was a good roll. Look at that. He could have made the He could point. have made the – he doesn't need to. I have three up. He just wants to get those checkers out. That was That's 100% clear. I don't think anyone really gets that wrong, actually. Well, this was unfortunate. Maybe I get a late shot. Maybe, yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, look at that. All right. Here's a chance. No, maybe still. Oh, and he clears. This was not fun at all. <laughs> well, let's, There's still let's, a miracle chance. Oh, he, fan with one, and he gets doubles. Yeah, when I'm in this position, I tell my opponent, "I really want a double six because and that's think, like that's like calling his bad numbers." Right. Yeah, but they don't get mad because you're calling them. Okay, six four. We're gonna have to win in the race, Rory. Um, I think I'm a small favorite here, so I, I, I'm feeling confident. You want to That's double. not how I would have played it, but whatever. 5-1? <laughs> <It doesn't> <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you made that play. Okay, now we'll analyze it. Fantastic play. You played as good as XG. Look at that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty uh, normal for me, I'll be honest. Pretty, pretty normal for you. It's a little on the weak side for you. <laughs> uh, I'm, used okay. to, I'm used to playing under 0 .05, and this one I played at 055. I mean, <laughs> you know, you just got to live with it sometimes, you know? <laughs> uh, all right, so we'll go through the plays. Uh, the viewers like it when they see the arrows, so we'll just look sure. at uh, yours. Uh, with a 6-4, so yeah, after the 4-3, you basically just, just want to run. Um, the second play was actually like this, which results in this position, and in a sense... I call this the distraction play because sure. if you look at this, like uh, he wants to hit with like sixes and ones and things like that. But, but if you look like, you know, three, one, four, one, five, one is good here. And a lot of the other numbers that hit here would otherwise be good here. So in a sense that works in that sense, it works as a distraction. Um, in any event, this was a little better because of what we discussed with the twos. Sure. Um, and then, then the five one. So this is the one that we were looking at. So, XG slightly preferred 14.8, and this one we did a rollout of. Um, so this is the play you made. Yep. This is the top play, so that's going to be play A, and this is the selected play. This is going to be play B, so we'll see what it looks like. So this is the resulting position after the top play, play A, and this is the resulting position after play B. Um, so... This is the dice distribution, the equity heat map 
after the two plays. For, so for those that are not familiar, the panel on the upper left shows your resultant equity after all 36 of the opponent's pulls. For example, double one, two one, three one, and so forth with an average on the right. So there are 36 plus the additional six uh, as an average. And the panel on the upper right shows the exact same thing, but after you made the second play, which was the selected play. Uh, now, the panel on the lower left shows the difference. So it takes an equity value in a given cell on the upper right and subtracts that from the equity value in the corresponding cell in the panel on the upper left. Um, so these shows the swing rolls. Um, now, for the top, blue is good, red is bad, and they're on the same color scale. In the, on the bottom, on the bottom left, if it's blue, it favors play A, and if it's red, it favors play B, and the intensity of the color uh, indicates by how much it favors that. Um, and then on the lower right panel, it basically plots all this in a vertical bar graph, um, so you don't have to worry about the intensity of the colors. I used to use green and red like uh, traffic lights, but uh, some people have a difficult have difficulty distinguishing between green and red, so I made it blue and red, and people like that. Um, in any event, you can see these rolls are six two five three double four and five three and six two again. So the eights that hit are really big swings. The only really bad one is five three. So if we go back and look at it, the resulting position you're hit with eights. So six two and five three and double four are really bad, whereas here that wouldn't be the case. So right. that does make sense. The other thing is we looked at the second roll. So, oh, let me go back here so you could see. This one actually uh, tabulates how they're played. So with the five, three, you're hit after play B. So that's a big equity difference. And six, two, same thing and double four and so forth. Um, the sure. big one, uh, the other way is the double five. Now, some people ask me, what does the, the yellow uh, versus white indicate? It, it basically, what it is is if the two plays are different, it's highlighted yellow. But if the plays are the same, it's white. So you see this oh, 6-5 okay. is played the same way. So that's white. Um, Interesting. Okay. That, so, so, you know, you can kind of tell things easily. Um, and then the other thing is the second roll. So this is a second roll equity heat map. So this displays the same thing, but after your next roll. So we see the swings here, like the 6-5 is the big one and the 6-1. So if we go back to, to here, you see 6-5 would likely be played 24-13 here. But after this play, uh, it's not that good. So like you would have to play here. Remember how we were discussing how the sixes play? So if you look yep. at this, this, this one right here, all the sixes play much better after uh, the top play, especially the 6-5. And that's yeah. actually what I rolled, <laughs> which cost me the game. <laughs> Did you? Oh, yeah. You rolled the 6-5. Well, the 6-5 because you were hit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Clearly. Uh, yeah. So uh, one ply roller smacked me upside the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Said, so don't do um, that again. It turns out on a plus plus, this was slightly too good to double um, pass, but it was it was a correct pass, and I, I can roll that out later. Um, so yeah. very good. So then we moved on to the second game. Uh, so we'll go back to the arrow. The five one was the standard split and the double one was a great roll. Yeah. It's now, one of my best. So, yeah. So like, let's put this on another board. So like, okay. So now you play double one um, and then let's look at, so like, what were the bad rolls? So like, let's do now. It's uh, for my opponent is, five four. I think is his worst. So we uh, maybe five, five one is bad. Yeah, let's do. Yeah, all of these are like really bad. Uh, oh yeah, five. Is that say six? Oh, six five is a double pass. Yeah, six five. Five two is a double pass. Six two is a wow. Yeah, there are actually lot, more double passes here than I thought. Yeah. And then let's see, see like here. Yeah. All these. Six, five, six, three. Let me do it like this. Six, five, six, three, six, two, five, four. So I'll move it to here. So even knowing six, three hops one, it's still a double pass. Interesting. 
Yeah, so let's look at, oh, so 6.3 would go to here, right? Uh, back it up one. Uh, yeah, sorry. There I'm actually go. surprised that this is, I would not have thought this is a pass. This, probably at the score. So, like, let's look yeah. at it for money. So now, no, no, now you have money. Yeah, it's not even a double. So wow. this is this is very interesting, and actually, it 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 is very instructive about match play because you look at this, and this is no double, but at three away, two away, now it's a double pass. Right. And let's see at four away, two away. No, it, that, it's know, a pass. It's too, it's too good. It's almost too good. It's getting close yeah. to too good. So the score really really affects things and you think about just a one point lead it makes a big difference towards the end of a match sure Whereas sure playing a 25 point match okay one zero to 25 is not a huge difference so it's probably not going to make a big deal here like right but pretty yeah, significant like, yeah here is the same right so, it's essentially money. Playing a 25-point match essentially changes this to money, essentially. Yeah. And let's say it was like 0-0. Zero, zero. It changes it very slightly. Very slightly. Yeah. Um, so that's – that's sorry. That's actually a very good lesson for the viewers to see, like, how uh, a simple point change um, affects things in a match. Okay. So then the 4-1, this is what we were discussing. It was nice to put the spare right there. Yeah. Actually, it's really close, though. It's really, really close. Actually, close. on rollout, yeah. that could easily change. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the next four, look at that. It slightly preferred this, but they were all, they were all uh, close. 6-5 is slightly better. Let me see. Let me look at this as to, Oh, one thing. One, uh, one thing that I saw immediately is if I play eight seven, my two three is duped. Yeah, it does. You're duped in the two three, so you're divert. You're under. You're diversifying both those. You give yourself good fives, fours, and ones on right, inside right, of right. board, and you know sixes, threes, and twos on the other side. Yeah. Um, okay. Interesting. Very good. And then the five four again, you had to hit, which kind of prevented you from making that point. Yeah, that was and, just an easy play. Yeah, the six four, the four was forced, and the six uh, was forced by logic, as Phil Simborg says. Yeah. Six five, you couldn't come in, and the two one, there wasn't a lot that you could do here. Yeah, it's everything. I don't think I have any more decisions. I think that's it. Everything was virtually forced and lost the gammon, but played. Very well. So well, I had three was... decisions and I got two of them wrong. <laughs> so I didn't feel like I played very good. <laughs> what did you get but... about that one? This one? This one is uh, this one is close. It's so yeah, there are a couple of them are really close. So yeah. Okay, so let me stop that. Um very good. So th that was an interesting match. There were there were some fun uh, and interesting choices. Uh what are your thoughts? I would like to have uh, better dice. I think we should have put in the dice change a little bit sooner. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that I got some. That I'm happy that the decisions I made, even those those that were wrong, I had good reasoning for. Um, I just didn't uh, give enough value to uh, what. And actually, you tried to talk me out of the uh, 14 9, uh, 24 23 play, uh, and uh, I just wouldn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out, it turns out they were close. And you know, yeah, they were, they I are. Said, the and, uh, important things for these are to uh, learn, to have fun and learn. Um, yeah, you know, when that's I played, definitely a learning point. Yeah, when when you play like a tournament or something like that, um, or you're playing in a chouette, obviously you want to win. Uh, but for me, like especially when I'm playing against XG, this is the opportunity to learn. So like, yeah, I don't I don't get disappointed. I actually prefer to, I, I would prefer to lose and play better than win and play worse. Of course, yeah. When when winning doesn't matter because uh, there's no financial stake or no advancement uh, in a tournament or something, then it's it's 100% all about uh, playing your very best and um, improving. 
improving your game and whether or not you play your your very best or not uh did you learn something and that's what that's what it's all about and that's what the, these sessions are all about um you know yeah i wanted to win but i wanted to play good and i did and uh a couple things uh actually i, I actually that that seven um eight seven play where i should have played six five um i actually should have gotten that right I, I i feel confident that i should have maybe i just auto played uh which i need to stop auto playing things they they come to bite me ba uh, bad uh but uh that that would that just seems very clear as soon as i realized playing eight seven duplicated the three two if i had seen that uh looked at it earlier i 100 percent would not have made that play yeah, I, I would have made awkward the right when play. you have that extra spare on the four and then you have that checker on the nine yeah right um, yeah. So uh, it's good stuff. I, uh, it was a good session. I learned a little bit. Uh, Ashley, and I got to give you props. That little uh, heat map thing you did uh, with the dice distribution, distribution and more so the one that shows the difference between uh, the values uh, once the... Uh, yeah, the difference between play right. A and play B. That's really beautiful stuff. I had never seen that before, and major major props to you for creating that. Uh, that's 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 an app, that's doing something for backgammon, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. That's um, actually something I learned. I got help with my friends, uh, with from my friends Travis Roberts and David Gallagher, who came okay. up with this. Um, the biggest issue with XG, even on the top two panels. When you look at it on XG, the color scale is different on the left and the right. So what happens is on either one, left or right, the color scale is such that the darkest green is the highest value in that particular map and the darkest red is the lowest value. But if you have a higher value in one map versus another map, they won't correspond. But on this one that, that we designed, um, it's, it's the same color, um, color coding. Um, and then XG also doesn't have the ones on the bottom. Um, so that was good. And then like I expanded it to uh, two roles. We look at the second role and there's like a lot of other features that, that I've done. Um, and that's available to all um, USBGF premium members. You could, you could do that. And I know uh, you and I are both on the board of directors of the USBGF. So yes, there's an opportunity to, you know, tell people, what are the advantages of being a member of the USBGF? Even if you don't, you don't live in the United States. What what are what are the advantages? Well, there 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 are numerous, uh, but the first one is you can play on the ABT tournaments <laughs> in the main division. Uh, that's one thing is a that is a requirement to play in uh, uh, ABT uh, at, um, championship or intermediate or advanced division tournament. Is you must be a USBGF member. Uh, there's also just there's so many benefits of being when you log into the website, so many resources that are listed there. Uh, the OT, uh, what are the, the uh, online tournament series that run by Jason Lee, uh, you can be part of that, which is basically every day. Um, it's an ongoing match. That's uh, who's uh, Matt Reclitus is playing one side of it, I believe. So it's the online match, and that now it's Roberto Litzenberger. Oh, it's Roberto. Then, I, I yeah, apologize. I yeah, it's a the analysis for the team. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So uh, basically, you're everyone is playing one play per day against Roberto. He's going to make a play, and then the next day, uh, Jason Lee posts it up there, and you vote on what you think is the best play, and Jason Lee then makes the play. Uh, and then goes back to Roberto, and you go and back. It's a back and forth. It's an online match series. Uh, Neil Kazros previously was the uh, expert on the other side, uh, and it's just a fantastic learning tool because uh, you get also other top players um, putting in their comments as to why they think this play is best or that play is best, and it's just it's, it's just a really good uh, nice service that the USBGF provides, and uh, the work that Jason Lee does to put this together and. Uh, manage it is fantastic he's a good dude yeah he's fantastic um so there's that there's a lot of other educational content like yeah. the Braze learning curve phil simborg videos a lot of uh videos um, phil, and, phil, and phil's videos are money i mean yeah. uh he, he's just so charismatic and entertaining and really is able to come up with some great insight into why these plays are the best. Uh, major kudos to all he does for back him. And I mean, there's very few people that do more than he does. Yeah. And there's also the primetime magazine, which of is course, of course, 
Although you don't actually have to, be, uh, oh, the online version, yeah, you do have to be a member, uh, but anyone can order the magazine. If you, And uh, I, one thing about the Primetime Magazine, for those of you who don't know, um, it's been published uh, uh, maybe a little over 10 years now. So there's like been 40 volumes or a little more than 40 volumes. Um, and federations of other games like chess and checkers and uh, Go or whatever, they have seen powers that be in those organizations have seen what we're producing and call it the the leaders of those organizations call the prime time back in the magazine the number one published resource uh uh magazine by any federation and any game board game um so it really is something special what what, what the organ uh, usbgf puts together with that magazine and thank you to karen davis for all she does and marty store who's the executive editor now and i think tyra mendocino was the previous editor i mean really it's 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 such a treasure that magazine it's awesome it's fantastic. and uh and to be on the cover is something special i hope to be there one day yeah, yeah. Were you on the cover when they did that team, or were you on the team? The I was team? not on the team. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, next time. If, next if time. I, you, I would have mentioned that I was on the cover. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> One day. <laughs> yeah. One day. Uh, well, I want to also take this opportunity to express my gratitude and appreciation to you for all the things that you do for backgammon with the USBGF, the Chicago Open, the Las Vegas uh, tournaments. I know that's been challenging, but hopefully we'll have another one soon there you're, you have the next year's chicago open scheduled for what is it, yeah, like it well, it's, I, I don't have to schedule it. it's every year over memorial day weekend memorial uh day weekend. There, i think there is a shift in the calendar so it's either a little bit earlier or later than it was last uh this year but uh uh, but yeah, it's memorial, the last Memorial Day weekend. So the last Monday in May is Memorial Day. So it's that weekend. And uh, uh, I'm just starting initial phases of uh, planning. So uh, look look out for uh, the first announcement once uh, I have everything set up. All right. Well, well, good luck with that. Congratulations on all your recent successes and everything you've done. Wishing you uh, safe travels. Do you have any final comments before we conclude the video? Yes. If you haven't made plans to go to Novi in, I don't know, was it a week or two, you got to go. Yeah, you gotta hopefully, go. hopefully people will. I think this may be uh, published after that. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. I forgot. I apologize. But I did do a video with Ben Friesen about it to promote it. Um, so hopefully yeah. they will. And like, uh, yeah, all the it's going to be awesome. Events. Yeah, yeah. All right. Absolutely. Well, very good. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot, brother. Thank yeah. you so much. My pleasure. Thank you to my good friend. Rory Pascar, I'll go ahead and conclude. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. Again, I appreciate your super thanks. These small donations help me continue to create the high quality content that you enjoy. And with the membership feature, you can get exclusive access to the most popular videos. Again, my book, Backgame and Backgame Strategies is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is also in the description. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.